Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and welcome back to the Total War Rome Remastered tutorial series. I took a little bit of a hiatus, a little bit longer than I had anticipated, but I am back now. Uh, now, there are a couple of things I want to establish now that I have gone on this hiatus and I have kind of looked at things in perspective. I don't know how many more episodes we are going to do with this. I can go one of two ways, or yeah, one of a few ways. We can continue on in this similar let's play where I explain things in detail as I play it with the intent, of course, of uh, educating you on all of the mechanics as your empire expands. So, for instance, we would continue our war with Gaul and then we would probably expand either into Iberia and then possibly into Macedon or Greece, maybe even into Africa if we could. All along, you're just rolling with me as I explain a turn by turn scenario. That's a little bit of a longer form ideology of, of what we could do here, or what we can do is establish a couple of early game goals, namely with things like uh, settling a peace after a war, a little bit more with your advanced merchants, and then seeing what it really looks like when you start progressing through your city. So a couple of more episodes on that front, and then transporting into the future where I play several more turns where you see my empire at a relatively large scale, so it's more of a kind of a mid to end game scenario where then maybe it leads up to our inevitable ro war with war Rome or something of that effect where you can see a little bit easier of a progression without so many episodes. So I'm not quite sure how I want to do that right now. So if you want to, you could totally leave your comments in the comment section down below to let me know what you think and what you would prefer. I'm up for either way. It just depends on the longevity of what you are willing to listen to and what you are willing to do within it. So with that in mind, today's episode is going to be the usual standard and we're going to try and catch up. Remember everywhere that we are. Remember everything that we're doing. And we are at war with Gaul right now. We have continued this war. Captain Cunavindus has 3,500 men of which we do not know the composition of. So what we're going to try and do today is go to war with them, maybe have a little bit of a more advanced battle, show you what a large scale uh, enemy battle looks like, maybe potentially some more advanced setups, some more advanced tactics, not terribly advanced because remember this is the early game so there's not a whole lot we can do in regards to that advancement and then see what we can't do to push our way into goal to try and force that piece. Now, typically... What will happen in this sort of scenario is that they won't start yielding until our power is significantly more than theirs. So as you can see here, the strength comparison, Gaul is still the stronger faction. They have more territories. They have a larger army. Uh, while it may not be as advanced, it is larger just by the default of the barbarians. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and wipe out this army of 3,500 men that might give us a leg up, but I imagine they'll have some more over here because they do have a, a few large towns. Yeah, so they should be able to pump out a lot of men pretty quick. Then what we're going to do, I know we have some merchants over here. We're going to switch things up a little bit. To me, in the early game, it's probably going to be a little bit more efficient to just establish trade with more of these far-flung empires, as it were. So what we're going to do is we are going to bring uh, the Naeus of Eretium is going to go into Tylus. It says potential merchant income 40 plus. Uh, we don't know exactly what that will be until we get into it. And then Herennius of Patavium is going to go into Byzantium and see what we can do there. Now, this may not be the most efficient way, but again, for the early game and for beginners, until you can start figuring out how to manage them correctly, the most if, uh, the best way for beginners is to just keep on in there. And in fact, that's what we're doing with Cornelius of Arimium. He's going to go into Porlissium. Now, the idea here is that the further away you establish trade and you have a merchant, the more money it makes. So what we could do, we could drop a guy yes. in Byzantium. Yes. And we could even go so far as to go to Tanaeus or even Campus Scythii. Now, that is also dependent on resources. It is dependent on a handful of other things. So, 
let's just let's stick with what we know. Stick with what's guaranteed for now, and we'll keep that there. Now, there's not much else we can do with this turn. Our Menius Julius is as far as he can go. His reinforcements are going to get their next turn. These reinforcements will get their next turn. And we are replenishing these troops. We're retraining them. So they will be at full speed next turn unless these guys attack me, which I kind of feel like they won't. Uh, that's a little too risky for them. And we do outnumber them just from a purely uh, manned standpoint. So we'll wait for the next turn and then we'll get our forces all the way up to 20 out of 20. And then we'll go cat. Uh, Go attack, excuse me, Captain Captain Gull, dude. <laughs> uh, as for our empire, we aren't making a ton of money. We are going to net uh, 1,800. Excuse me, we're going to net three denarii, <laughs> uh, and which will result in a 2,600 at the end of the next turn. We are a few things we have to consider in our meager little empire. So let's go ahead and hit the end turn. All right, there we go. So 1,800 is actually what we end up with and if we don't do anything we will get 1200 denarii next turn which isn't too shabby what i'm going to do here is i am just going to go ahead and drop these two guys back at home base because they are not replenished we're gonna bring these guys up behind bring these guys up behind can i not i can't okay good Let's see, so that gives us... Oh, nope, okay, so this is where we're gonna need to turn our camera so we can kind of establish where things are. We have one, two, three, four, five, six cavalry units. That's gonna be a little more than you'll ever really need. Even a cav heavy build still needs to balance that out with guys like uh, infantry or ranged units. So we will we'll keep this, and I'll show you why we'll keep it. I have a feeling that, yeah, they're all war bands. So I have a feeling they're going to route pretty quickly, and if they are going to route quickly, then uh, we're going to need some troops to run them down. So this is still, that it's a little unnecessary. I wish I could drag and drop and organize, but we can't. So let's go ahead and attack. We'll worry about all this stuff later. I'm more concerned about taking on Captain Conovendus. All right. This is, I believe, our first battle involving reinforcements. And there's two ways you can go about it. As you can see right here, uh, we have 2,800 men. They have 3,500, so they outnumber us. But if you bring in our reinforcements, we have an extra 1,750, which does, of course, vastly outweigh them. We can go about this two ways. First, we can not have the AI control the armies, in which case, in Rome Remastered, we will only have these 20 units until we have other units route, and in which case, we will only ever have 20 units on the battlefield. This was before the 40 uh, unit ideology or implementation mechanic, whatever you want to call it. Now, if we were to do AI controlled enabled, they will all come in. All 1,500 of these men, or 1,750, will come in, but we won't be able to control them. So you kind of have to juggle what you would rather do. Would you rather have more men but not be in control of all of them and potentially lose a lot more? Or do you want to be in control but have less men? For this one, I'm actually going to do less men because if this ends up being a bigger struggle than I anticipate, I'm going to want to be in control of any reinforcements that come in. Now, we don't have the ability to fight a night battle. While we do have the ability to auto-resolve, typically I don't auto-resolve these really big battles because you never know what will happen. And again, I would just I would just rather be in control. It's just a, it's a control issue for sure. We do outweigh them in terms of command and all that stuff because it is just the captain. And that is going to play heavily into our favor because it is going to be easier to route a unit that does not have a general. So we're going to go ahead and fight this battle. We're not going to listen to this. We've we've listened to enough here. And this is where we're going to get into our... I won't say more advanced because it's not a crazy advanced system in terms of uh, what I'm about to do here. So don't think like this is some super elite, you know, 
meta build or anything of that nature because that's just not how I roll. So what I'm going to do, I always throw my mercenaries in up front. They're always going to be our first ones to get wrecked because I need, I need my main troops alive the most. And what I typically do is I do three sets of everything if I can. So that just gives you a center unit, a little bit of a quiet bit of room of spread. And it also covers enough of the battlefield where you can still also flank. So I do sets of three whenever I can. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hold these guys in reserve. You won't usually need this for Rome Remastered, I found, but it's still handy to have units in reserve. And this is my standard formation. I have my main core, which will usually be more sturdier troops, my more heavy duty guys that can hold that front line very well. We only have Hastati and our Barbarians, so there's not much we can do. But in the later games, you're going to want to implement heavier line troops at the front. I have my lighter troops on the side. Again, they're all the same unit in this battle, but that way they typically move faster, they can flank, they can reinforce. And then for my reinforcements, just having units in the backfield to be able to respond is always going to give you a little more flex in case the AI or a multiplayer match where someone does something unexpected. These guys can do the same thing. They can reinforce or if they're engaged, I can flank with them. They have their ranged unit or uh, uh, ranged ability. So they're going to be able to use that. I have to turn it on every time. And then the ultimate flex move is having your cab. Now having them on the backside again just allows you to hold them in reserve usually the ai will trend to target cavalry but if you have them behind infantry troops it just allows you to be able to use your infantry or use your cav as kind of a bait to get your infantry in and be able to get that so you can then flank and do whatever you want cav in the backfield of any battle is going to give you the ultimate advantage all right so you see the reinforcements are here they are waiting for us but they cannot actively get into the battle. Again, because I can only control 20 units. So as soon as one of these units completely routes off the battlefield, we're going to super uh, slow time here. I'm actually going to pause it. So once I have to have a unit that completely routes on the battlefield, that doesn't mean they route in battle. This dude, if he's routing, has to get off of the field before one of my units come in now the other unfortunate thing is i can't choose what units i would prefer a unit of Hastati. i do believe i have my triarii and these reinforcements uh right there i would love to have them come in too but i can't control that so odds are i would just have archers which isn't the worst thing but it's not the best so as you can see they tend to take up the whole battlefield they are going to kind of swarm at me so i'm going to let them get a little close and then at the last second, I'm going to charge my barbarians in, which they will route. They will route rather fast, I anticipate, because that's just how they are. And then we will be able to use our ranged attacks. Now, these ranged attacks will do some pretty hardcore damage on these spearmen. So I'm hoping, hoping that they do route. And we're going to kind of play this in slow motion, just so you can see some of the more uh, advanced sort of tactics that we will end up using. I'm moving my general closer just for uh, area of effect. So that way, if I need to use my rally, I can use it and get most of my troops. It looks like they're just going to chill. We can move our entire regiment up if they will not. Again, alt dragging. will give you that ability. And again, we're in slow motion, so it's going to take it just a minute for them to respond. My general is the first guy to respond. And we are just going to play this nice and slow. I think they're using their war cry ability. Yep. Does indeed seem like that's what they're doing. That's fine. We see their general or their captain, excuse me, he'll always have a different banner than the rest of them. And of course he is going to be well protected. We might be able to move our troops up even just a little bit more because what was going to happen is they will not come at us until we are in range of them to attack 
them via ranged combat. So one of the smart things you can do is just kind of hold on, and if they aren't going to move, just get your troops just within range to where you can start attacking them, and they're kind of forced into it, as it were. So let's move them up just a little bit more. You can see my Velites, they are going to get close, and they should be even to get in uh, into there right off the bat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reform this entire line because if they all swarm at me, they're going to be able to attack me and overwhelm. It's going to be the same on this flank. We're going to move in. I'm going to drag my line just so we can more effectively combat those guys. All right. Let's go ahead and move up just a smidgen with my Velites so they can go in and attack. There you go. It shouldn't take much. Hopefully they don't uh, kill my own troops. Any day now, Velites. Here we go. We're going to play in normal speed. There they go. Not really fantastic. I'm not going to lie. Go ahead and move these guys up. They don't need to move all the way up. It's a glitch in the gameplay. There we go. This might trigger them. So they are using their war cry. Just uh, taking turns. Here we go. Now the real volley starts. They don't have any ranged unit themselves, so they can't exactly counter me. The only way they could counter me is if uh, they just kind of charged at me. There we go. If they want to waste, uh, if they want to waste their men, I will gladly, gladly take on uh, some kills for them. And then what we will do is we're going to use Warcry ourselves. And it looks like they are not going to push it, so we are going to push ourselves. And then I'm going to get group number four, which was my frontline Hastati troops. I'm going to move them forward. There we go. Then we'll move on those troops. As I mentioned, they are going to route rather quickly. It's just designed to kind of trigger the AI into attacking. Here we go. So they started pursuing, which is exactly what we wanted to happen because they are now in range of our Pelums. And they should start engaging. Nope, didn't was not able to pull it off in time. There you go. See, it's kind of hard when they're running straight into a, uh, a group of very well-trained soldiers. So we're going to have them fight. Those guys are just going to stay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Hold on. Come back in line. One thing I forgot to do was to drop all of my men into guard mode. That is going to be very crucial for our infantry. Because... We don't need that line breaking like you just saw. So I'm going to hold down Alt and Control. It's going to allow me to move and shift. And we're just going to start probing out here. We've seen them break up into their groups. And we know that we can take them on. So I'm just going to start moving my troops up. Move them up just enough to have their ranged attack. The Villates are out of ammo. And it looks like these guys really, really don't want to fight. Here we go. Get some good kills. And they are really, really not wanting to, to put up one of those fights, are they? Keep on moving then. We'll move our reinforcements up as well. So this is the typical slow engagements that I like to push. I'm not an overtly aggressive person unless I know without a doubt that I can win. 
and I don't often know for sure a hundred percent that I will win so what I tend to do is just uh, just let the ranged work do its mess and then move on from there we're gonna move these guys up just a little bit awesome And now we move up and they are engaged over there. And this is where we can start using our cav. Start bringing our cav around. Again, we can flank on the outside like that. We have our barbarians too. Let's go ahead and get them back in there. Go ahead and hit those guys in the back. All right, so they are engaged, which means they are not going to be able to turn around and hit me. This is called a hammer and anvil for those of you who are brand new to strategy games. You have your infantry as the anvil and your cav units as the hammer. And typically, it's going to be too much for a majority of troops to be able to handle. And as you can see, they are routing. And now you see that these troops, they haven't engaged yet, but they are also routing. That is because they are retreating. This is a period of total war in which armies were able to determine whether or not they were going to win. And if they weren't, they just retreated, as you're seeing right now, which I honestly wish would make a return to the series because it makes battles much less definitive. If you know what I mean, uh, just you, you kind of have to fight more of them to really decimate the enemy, which I think adds a sense of, of realism to the genre. Go ahead. Come on. And so we're going to try and slaughter as many as we can. There's not going to be a whole lot that we can do against these guys. There we go. Kill those guys. We can try and catch up to them, but the odds of us... Catching them and actually routing them. Nope, it's going to be slim to none. Let's super fast forward time. We're just going to go ahead and end the battle. Okay, so we didn't really... Like I said, that wasn't super, super like, holy crap, that was an epic battle. But it still did a lot of good. We lost 323 men in that engagement. They lost 2,268 men. So by deploying only 2,800 being outmatched by around 700 men, we now have a two to one advantage over them just with this army and not even the reinforcement. All right, he's gonna retreat back. And we are going to pursue to an extent. I don't wanna to pursue too much. There he is, okay. But we can potentially destroy him. And now if we go here, uh, it actually hasn't changed all that much. I thought it would change a little bit more. You will you will uh, dynamically see that alter as as things happen. All right, so the only thing we need to repair is one of these guys. That's fine. I do have my diplomat over here, and I'm honestly not too sure what he's doing. He may have just been around here to scope the place out. So we'll keep him over there. Yes. We're going to get this dude over in Byzantium which is going to give us 128 income. We're going to get this guy into Tylus, which is going to give us 56, which isn't fantastic, but it's not bad. Two more turns until we get into Poor Elysium. And uh, that's all of our merchants at the moment. What do we got for news? The eruption at Etna. Were we to uh, be a part of this faction, we would see that the event would be a little more dramatic. And then, of course, this is saying, hey, you retrained a whole bunch of people in our end of turn report. Nothing too, too bonkers in that area. I'm not going to build anything. I would kind of like to build up my reserves of money simply from a, well, we're going to have a lot to pay standpoint. That being said, roads are going to be helpful. Character movement by road 25%. That's going to allow us to get... A good chunk through Mediolanum without any issues, and that is going to be it. We are not going to worry about taking Salona. That is over here. Uh, it's not a concern of mine at the moment, but you will see that Suggesta 
beat back the Macedons. So I'm going to try a little sneaky sneakiness. And we'll go that much. That's a lot of troops. But I still think we'll be okay. I don't think they'll come and get us. Let's go ahead and hit the end turn. We'll see what developments happen. Gaul decided not to move. So that was an interesting choice. Let's take a look at the events real quick. Diplomatic information. Scythia and Thrace are at war with each other. Britannia and Dacia are allies. And we are the strongest faction. That doesn't really mean much. I don't ever put stock in that uh, because it could change at the drop of a hat. And you don't get any bonuses for it. So it doesn't really matter. Suggesta completed the Governor's Vila from the last episode. And then Rhodes as well. We are making just a little bit more dough. All right, so if we were to go down here, like I've said before, we have all the tier one. Well, I guess actually they would be tier two buildings. I'm going to build a port. And the reason why I'm going to build a port is for one, it gets us the most money, but it also allows us to have another point of access to build ships. And it also opens up more trade, which is automatic for us. We don't even have to do anything. Now, something also to consider, especially if you played the later Total Wars, is that there is no such thing as winter attrition. Um, even in all this stuff, we don't have a supply limit. We don't have any of that nonsense. So trudging around in winter is not going to cause any problems. And we're going to go back here. And this is an instance where I would auto-resolve. We know how to fight this, but we're going to go ahead and just fight it anyways. Start deployment, and we're going to do the exact same thing. So I am going to go a little bit quicker. Because you know the setup that's about to happen. We're going to give it the exact same layout. We're going to do the same stuff. Barbarians up in the front. Um, all of that standard things. We got our flank. We got our other flank. And then we've got our velites and our two reinforcements. Now I'm going to push this a bit harder. Because... I want to route this entire army. This is also before the whole... Well, no, they may actually still fully die in this. I'm not entirely sure. Go there, so that way they throw their pelums. And we ain't got much time for nonsense. So, like I said, I am going to actively engage. We will throw our pelums if we can. And this time, as a bit of a different tactic, I'm actually going to go on the offensive. And instead of doing a reverse, well, I am doing a reverse moon. Uh, we are doing the whole uh, <laughs> Battle of Kene procedure here. Surround them until they can't uh, until they can't leave. There we go. Oh, goodness, we don't... Oh, okay, I see what happened. We goofed up on our troop layout. That's a big... Uh oh. So you need to be mindful of where your groups are. Because as you see here, I crisscrossed my troops, which is not something you really want to do. So let's just go ahead and surround them. This will be a uh, not-so-pleasant... There we go. A not so pleasant. Uh, it'll be a little bit messier of a battle. Let's go ahead and move up. The enemy general is running away. This is no way for a leader to behave, but in battle, it's beyond belief. It is beyond belief. How how uh, despicable. The shameful display. And he's going to come at us. I'm going to try and see if I can't get a unit to reach up and nab him. Because unfortunately, we might lose a decent chunk of troops if we let them come in. Uh, I brought in my cav. This is another solution. Bring in your cav if they are pursuing someone. We just... They just lost their general. But bringing up a unit of cavalry to go attack from behind or... To have make these guys turn around because the AI isn't that dumb. And then smack them with another set of units uh, from behind. Kind of do a, a weird awkward hammer anvil. And the, yep, as soon as that hits, there we go. 
So again, a messy battle. No, we are going to continue this. I just want to make sure that they all die. There we go. One soldier left. They are dead. We only lost 175. We would have lost less had I been smarter about that. That is a problem that I personally have that you need to watch out for as well, especially if you are beginning in, in pretty much any strategy game, is that if you go into a battle thinking that, oh, this is a super easy one, uh, you tend to get cocky and it causes uh, some potential issues. So always keep that in mind. That, that could have been a lot, lot better for ourselves. Uh, Galerius Hordioni, Hordionius, goodness. Got Barbarian Turncoat, which gives them plus one command when fighting Barbarians. Very, very good uh, for our current campaign. Now, now you will see that we are relatively equal. We're still going to have to push them, though. They aren't going to want to let go that simply. They just won't. And then we'll have to see about these guys. If they just siege them out, they do have a large number of men. We'll have to look on that front. Again, there's nothing that I really want to pursue. That guy came over in poor Elysium. We didn't look and see. Let us end the bloodshed. All right. So. You have two options here, especially when a faction comes to you to resolve a war. When you're playing as the Julii, and I am assuming that you are playing the Julii if you're watching this, Gaul does not have... A lot to offer the regions of Gaul do not have a lot to offer if you can and we have secured the the peninsula of it of Italia or Italy this is a good thing to want to have they want a ceasefire but we're gonna see if we can't get something be it trade rights that would be okay with me for now it would allow us to focus on other areas like Greece. Greece is a is a pocket full and a half and would be well worth going into that. And we could even request that they make a single payment. How does a thousand buckaroonies sound? Generous. Again, if it's generous, it means that, you know, they will accept it. Anytime I see generous, it just makes me want to bump it up a little bit more. Balanced. So let's see if they do this. If they do, then we will be done. This is a great negotiating tool. Typically, and usually a faction will not be willing to give up regions, entire regions. We could ask for it. And that gives us a list there, but they're not going to want to do that. They're not in such a position where that's a bad thing. Um, usually when they're kind of really, really losing, will they offer that? So let's go ahead and see if they do it. Very well. Awesome. Sometimes a strong warrior must bite his tongue and accept the unacceptable. Fantastic. So that's our war. That's the end of our war with Gaul for now. So if we go here, we see that our agent is here. How much is he making? He's bringing in 102. So in regards to our entire setup here, our merchants are bringing in 300, which is not too shabby. It's not super fantastic, and we could start taking advantage of some more resources. But again, I still want to make an actual video on that. But I got to get more into the late game in order to do it. So we're going to come back here. They are still besieging it. I don't know if they're going to get it. it. Looks like Macedon is going towards Salona. But as we can see here... The Brutii in this campaign have not been able to secure a foothold yet. This would be a prime opportunity for us to come in, with a caveat. Just because Gaul offered the ceasefire does not mean they won't stab us in the back. So what I'm going to do is I am going to build a few more units. I can't really build anything here, which is fine. But we are going to keep a decently strong garrison in our home country. And we're going to come in through here. We're going to start making our way into Greece in the next episode. We see here diplomatic information. Armenia and the Seleucids are at war. Or no, excuse me. Are allied with the Greek city-states. And then we have had a ceasefire. And then like I said. That's why I don't pay attention to strongest faction. 
uh, wealthiest faction, most advanced, any of that stuff. It changes at the drop of a hat, and it does nothing for you. So we're going to burn all of our notices. We don't need any of that garbage. We will not be able to get Salona, which means we will not be able to have an office prioritized to us. Which is a bit of a shame, but not completely unexpected. Back in our hometowns, and this is something else that we can consider. In a defense against, uh, against Gaul, we do need to build a wooden wall and suggest it. That allows us a few extra turns to hold out if necessary to bring in reinforcements. Uh, let's see, in Mediolanum, we could even build some blacksmiths. That's going to allow us to upgrade our troops. So we have stronger troops and more efficient troops against their waves of rather lackluster guys. We can do the same things over here. We can build a wooden wall right now. We just have a wooden palisade, and that's not going to be good to defend against Gaul. So we're going to build that right there. Batavium already has their wooden wall, but we are also running low on supplies. So actually, we won't do anything. I want to hit uh, one more intern so we can have Suggest to build its port, and I think that's going to be a pretty decent spot to want to uh, in the episode. So we have an inactive spy. This is another really nice feature. Let's get them down into Macedonia since we're going to want to pay attention to that. And then, of course, we have an inactive fleet. I'm going to keep that guy there. I'm not going to, to worry about him. And then we will be good. We've already gotten the, the sad sound of a missed mission. And now, as you can see, we are making a decent amount more every turn. Things are a little more stable. We didn't take Salona. It's okay. Dacia and Parthia have announced they are allies. And then your typical stuff. Suggesta has finally built its port. And we are hunky-dory. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the end of this episode. We can see that they are still sieging. They're probably going to take that just by default. We're going to uh, retrain our troops at Batavium. I can build units there. Yes, I can. Good. And then we're going to start heading down south. If it means a war with Macedonia, then so be it. But I want to try and get down to these larger scale siege battles for you. So you can figure out a few more tactics and how effective some siege battles can be. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did... Be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on bell notifications. And especially let me know how you want me to proceed with this tutorial guide. Whether you want to do a few more turns now and then go into the future quite a bit when I've expanded a lot more. Or whether you want to make this just kind of like a let's play where I just go into detail everything that I'm doing. Thank you so very much for watching, guys. I will see you all in the next one.